Welcome back to a look at how your favourite team can win MCC. This series is dedicated to looking at the strengths and weaknesses of various teams and figuring out their best route to dodgeball. This is part 2 of a series, so if you haven't seen part 1, I would suggest watching that first. First things first, a brief refresh on personal averages using Fundy and Pearlescent Moon as examples. Fundy scored an average of 300 coins per game, so he has a personal average of 300. Pearl's personal average is lower, being just 215. However, in Sky Battle, Fundy scores 247 coins and Pearl scores 229 coins. Even though Fundy averages more coins, because he performs below his personal average, this would be considered a bad game for him and a pretty good game for Pearl. With that out of the way, on to the stats. Cyan Creepers The first team we'll be looking at is the Cyan Creepers, led by Pete, looking to redeem himself after his unfortunate early exit in MCC 15. Joining him are Pearlescent Moon, Spifey, and the highest placing newcomer from MCC 15, Preston. This team is very strong and is definitely contended to make it to dodgebolt. The best game for Siam by far is Sands of Time. They score 1,322 coins, first place in the event. Preston's fantastic first Sands of Time contributes a lot to this, and actually puts him second in the event in terms of averages. Additionally, Spifey is criminally underrated in Sands of Time, being the fifth ranked in the event. Pete does around his average in this game, with Pearl being the only one to struggle, largely due to bad performances from early MCCs and the unfortunate events of MCC 15. Despite this, Cyan definitely wants the Sands of Time finish to return, due to this being their best game. The other game to target is Survival Games, where they score 1,317 coins. A big reason why this score is so high is Pearl. This is the best game in the event for her, thanks to her previous strong performances. Additionally, every member of Cyan scores above their personal averages, with Preston in particular having a very high score as well. SG is always unpredictable, but this team can certainly hold their own in late game survival games. The worst game for Cyan is Ace Race. Although Pete is the best Ace Race player in the event by a fair margin, his average still isn't enough to save their score. Everyone else on this team struggles significantly, though Preston has the potential to do much better after his first tenure with the game. Still, this should be played earlier or ideally not played at all. The other bad game for Cyan I want to highlight is Parkour Tag. They average 1,092 coins. The only reason this game isn't abysmal is Preston who absolutely popped off in MCC 15 by Cortac, placing third individually. Pearl and Spifey also score only just below their averages, but nothing too bad. The reason this game is not good for Cyan is Pete. Parkour Tag is Pete's worst game by far, averaging just 288 coins. Considering that Parkour Tag is the highest scoring game in the event, this score is even worse in context. Granted, this is still high, it's just low for Pete. Be careful about this game. So, now let's look at Cyan's optimal game order. The best order for Cyan is... Parkour Tag, Hole in the Wall, Sky Battle, To Get to the Other Side, Build Mart, Battle Box, Survival Games, and then Sands of Time, with Ace Race being skipped. This order gives Cyan 18,890 coins, first place above Orange and Purple. Given Pete continues his dance and some good communication happens, this team is definitely a dodgeball contender. Aqua Axolotls this team sees a returning duo of Five Up and Ant Frost, who surpassed expectations with a great first performance in MCC 15. Joining them is Turbo and Fundy, two very strong competitors and top 10 finishers in MCC 15. This team is definitely strong, but they're gonna need a good game order if they want to get to Dodgebot. Aqua's best game by a mile is Battlebox, where they score 1,384 points. This is largely due to Ant Frost and Five Up, who absolutely dominated MCC 15 Battlebox. As a result, Ant has the highest Battlebox average in the event, with Five Up not far behind in 4. Fundy scores a bit below his average, but Ant and 5-Up are enough to carry this game, with Turbo not doing all that bad himself. Play this one with a high multiplier for sure. The other game Aqua should target is to get to the other side, where they score 1,209 coins. This game is very solid all around, and is the only game where every member of Aqua scores above their personal average, additionally being one of Ant Frost and Fundy's best games. Though half the team is working with a small sample size, they are still a favourite in the game. Now onto the bad games. The worst game for Aqua is Survival Games, where they score 700 151 coins. Ant Frost and Five Up had a pretty poor first SG game, while Fundy also scores below his average. Turbo has a positive score on this game, but it's a bit deceiving, as if you take away his MCC 14 SG win, it becomes one of his worst games. Avoid this game at all costs if you can. The last game I want to look at is Build Mart, where Aqua scores 868 coins, with Ant Frost and Five Up never playing it, and Turbo and Fundy both doing pretty poorly in it. This is definitely a game to get out of the way if the stats are any indication. However, the two newcomers have proven themselves in adapting to MCC games, and 5up has been on the record for having a secret build mark strategy. Still though, be careful giving this game a high multiplier. It's time for the optimal game order. The best order for Aqua is Build Mart, Ace Race, Parkour Tag, Hole in the Wall, Sky Battle, Sands of Time, To Get to the Other Side, and then Battle Box, with SG being skipped. 
This gets Aqua third, behind purple and ahead of orange. This team could definitely make it to dodgeball with a bit of luck. Sapphire Simmers Next, we have a returning fan favourite. While Season 2 has had extreme parity within its teams, this fan favourite team is a relic of Season 1 that falls behind every team of MCC 16. They have never finished ahead of ninth place and are a for fun team through and through. Regardless of that, they still have some good and bad games for us to look at, so let's see where they can break out of that tenth place. The best game for Sapphire by far is Hole in the Wall. They score an average of 748 coins, with every member of Blue scoring above their personal average here. James Turner particularly does well here, in fact having an average above the event average for Hole in the Wall, and he's the only simmer to do so in any game. A good Hole in the Wall finish can certainly be the catalyst for a good finish overall, so try to play this one late. The next best game is Survival Games, where they score about 686 coins on average. The leaders for this game are Zeus and Gluon, and this is their best game in the event. James Turner does fairly well too, with Excellus scoring just about average. This game is definitely one that Blue wants played late for a potential surprise finish. Now on to the bad games. The worst game for Blue is Sky Battle. They average 200. 70 coins, which puts them a full 75% below average. Besides Vixella, the team as a whole does terribly in this game, well below their personal averages. Try to skip this one if you can. Another bad game for Sapphire is Ace Race, where they score just 371 coins. Zeus once again does very well, having a surprise top 20 finish in MCC 13, making up over half this score by himself. However, the other three simmers have traditionally done very poorly in Ace Race, with none of them having played the new Space Race map. Play this one early or skip it if you can. Next up is the optimal game order. The best order for Sapphire is Ace Race, Parkour Tag, Sands of Time, To Get to the Other Side, Battle Box, Build Mart, Survival Games, and then Hole in the Wall, with Sky Battle being skipped. This order nets Sapphire 8,563 coins, regrettably putting them in 10th. This team is a great team to watch and may give you a surprise depending on the battle box map, but the numbers are just not in their favour and they are unlikely to place 9th or higher. Purple Pandas this team is helmed by Fruitberries, one of the strongest players in the event, who's coming off a pretty rough event for him. Paired with him are three of the best team game players in MTC, Scott, Smallish Beans and Green. This team is very strong, and certainly a dodgeball contender if they get the right games. The first game Purple should target is Ace Race, scoring 1,351 coins. This is one of the best games for any team in the event, and Purple are the heavy favourites. Every member of Purple scores above their personal average, but Joel and Fruit especially dominate, with Fruit being third in the entire event. If Purple gets this game with a high multiplier, their odds of going to dodgeball increase dramatically. The second game Purple is good at is Build Mart, where they score 1,153 coins. This should come as no surprise, as Green and Scott are often regarded as two of the best Build Mart players in the event, but Fruit and Joel do great too as well. Of the 40 players in the event, every player in Purple falls in top 12. This is just a very well-rounded team and definitely one to watch out for. Play this one late. Now on to the bad games. By far the worst game for Purple is Battle Box, where they score 962 coins. Every member of Purple performs below their personal averages. Though, to be fair, Joel and Fruit aren't too far off their averages, but Scott and Green struggle. Play this one as early as possible, or skip it if you can. The last game Purple should avoid is Survival Games, where they average 1,095 coins. Scott and Green do pretty well in SG, with both of them scoring significantly above their averages. Joel, on the other hand, has SG as his worst game. The interesting one is Fruit. Fruit has played SG four times, one pretty good, two terrible, and one the most coins anyone has ever gotten in SG. This all comes together to give him a score 10 coins lower than his personal average. It's unclear if Fruit's streak of bad SG luck in Season 2 will continue, but if he can replicate his early performances, this team has nothing to worry about. In any instance, this game is a big risk and should be avoided if possible. Next up is the optimal game order. The best order for Purple is... Survival Games Parkour Tag To get to the other side Sky Battle, Sands of Time, Hole in the Wall, Build Mart, and then Ace Race, with Battle Box being skipped. This nets Purple 19,159 coins and first place. Given some good luck and Fruit bouncing back from MCC 15, this team is a dodgeball contender for sure. Pink Parrots Looking to continue his resurgence on the best MCC players, Dream has assembled a fairly strong team in MCC Xbox CPK, longtime friend Bad Boy Halo, and resident cosplayer Finster. This team is definitely competitive, but they're gonna need some pop offs if they want to make it to Dodgebolt. Let's get into the games. The best game for Pink by far is Parkour Tag. They scored 1,327 coins, putting them first in the event. CPK and Dream both do pretty well, scoring just above their averages, but the real reason this game is so high is Bad and Finn. They have both only played the game once 
performance, but they did fantastic, with Finn actually averaging second highest in the event after Preston. The sky's the limit for this team and should be given a chance to be played late. The next best game for Pink is Survival Games, where they average 1,208 coins. Every member of Pink scores above their averages, with Bad Boy Halo really scoring well above his average in particular. Baz and Finn have both only played SG once, and even Dream struggled with SG up until MCC 15. Still, the pop-off potential for this game is high, and shouldn't be upset if FG is late in the game rotation. Now onto the bad games. The worst game for Pink is Build Mart, to no one's surprise. They average 837 coins. Bad actually did pretty well in his first event, but CPK, Finn, and especially Dream all struggled. This is Dream's worst game by a lot, and while Build Mart often doesn't reward strong players due to a coin split, that fact isn't enough to make up for his subpar scores. Play this one early, or skip it if you can. The last game I want to mention is Hole in the Wall. They average 971 coins. CPK and Bad do well in this game, but Dream and Finn really Really struggle. They finish in ninth place as a team, only ahead of the Simmers, and it should be played it as early as possible. Now onto the final optimal game order. The best order for Pink is Hole in the Wall, Build Mart, Sky Battle, To Get to the Other Side, Battle Box, Sands of Time, Survival Games, and then Parkour Tag, with Ace Race being skipped. This gives Pink a score of 17,736 and 4th place in the event. They finish ahead of Lime and behind Purple. This team will certainly be competitive, and depending on if they can replicate their previous scores, they may be dodgeball contenders. And that's all the teams. I hope this was helpful for you all, and remember that these are only statistics, and that the beauty of MCC is that anything can happen, especially in Game 8. Thanks for watching, and remember to like and subscribe if you like this type of video.